Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, as you can see, catching all kinds of great sunshine today. All systems are full this late in the year and that's good. My little shop is coming right along, just about ready to lay the permanent floorboards down. <laughs> that that I've got laying down on there right now is actually going to be some siding for the shop, but uh, it's all great. It's dead level and probably get out here and lay those floorboards tomorrow. And in the meantime, I didn't think I was going to be able to uh, use this spot right here for solar, but I've been watching it real close and for this time of the year It's opened up very nicely. I'm gonna definitely use this spot back in here To run this shop and I'm gonna run a 400 watt String right there and that's gonna be just fine because when that Sun starts coming up in December Again, this just will keep opening up longer throughout the day, but it's already Oh, I don't know, about two o'clock. Plenty of good sun already here and it's gonna catch it for a while longer. So let's take a look at how to build uh, the system I'm gonna build and I'm gonna show you how to do it in a smaller version for under a thousand bucks. So I've already known what type of a system I'm gonna put in up there and I've been slowly uh, saving up and and getting my parts together and I thought well I'll show you guys how you can make your own solar system real quick and I'll be able to use uh, these components here and right here so you know I've got some solar panels and that's a two pack of 100 watt solar panels and for this system that I'm talking about coming in under a thousand bucks this this type of a system right here will do it and it has everything you need so uh, you're going to start with some solar and then you're going to come in with your solar, tie it into one of these, which is just a solar panel isolator switch, breaker switch basically is all that is. And that's all I use it for. And then from there, you'll tie into your charge controller. I am going to uh, up at the shop, put in that Victron MPPT 130, that's 100 volts, 30 amps. And that's going to cover those 400 watts of panels that I'm wanting uh, to put on there. Now, this is a good size even for uh, if you're going to build a smaller system because it allows you to add panels later, which a lot of you know as soon as you start building a little system, you start thinking, well, I'd like to add on to it. So that's a good one to start with. And then this is just a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, some solar panel cables, a couple of different uh, disconnect switches, a couple of bus bars, and whatever pure sine wave inverter you decide to go with, and then just a little bit of 10 gauge wiring. And that's it. That's an entire system right there. Now you can uh, mix and match it any way you might want to for your purposes and what's available where you are, but nothing here is outrageously expensive and you can be up and running in no time like this will only take you know an hour or two at the most to hook together and you, you get your own little power system and just to give you a quick breakdown of uh, the pricing and how i came up with this under one thousand dollars you know a two pack of 100 watt panels here these were 128 dollars um the 100 volt or 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries now uh, you know, name brand like Red Odo, they're, you know, they're hanging around 250 Other brands you may find are even getting closer to that $200 range. So, you know, right in there, 2 to 250 depending what, what battery you settle on. Uh, this uh, Victron MPPT 130 was $204. A pack of 30-foot... Uh, uh, solar panel cables was 50 bucks. The breakers, those are about $30. Or the bus bars, excuse me. And then, you know, I've got various fuses. You've got a 100 amp inline fuse here. I like this one quite a bit. Use it around the place an awful lot. 
And then one thing I didn't figure in is I used some cheaper uh, breakers too, but I've got a couple of nice blue C circuit breakers and a, and a main on off switch for your battery. So you can disconnect your battery. And of course you can disconnect your solar panels with this. And this is like 16 bucks to, to hang this. So all the parts, and then I just had a bunch of 10 gauge wire, but if you had to buy a little bit, you don't have to buy big rolls like this. You could just, you know, buy a smaller bit of 10 wire to connect everything up. So that's how I came up with that. And then on the, the uh, pure sine wave inverter, this particular model is not even available anymore, but it works fantastic. And it was barely over a hundred dollars back when I got it. And there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, 1000 watt pure sine wave inverters now, uh, just hovering around that 100 watt range. And if you know you don't even need to be pulling a thousand watts on a system this size, you know, you could get you a top of the line Victron uh, pure sine wave inverter. You know, if you can get by with 500 watts, those are like 150 bucks. And if you can get by with a 375, which I actually use, a couple of 375 Phoenix inverters that work fantastic. And those things are just barely over a hundred bucks now. So that's the great thing about all these things that they're coming down in price. So this is easily under a thousand dollars. Before I picked those up, it was coming in at $801 for, for everything here. But I was counting, I was pricing just a little bit cheaper than that particular battery. But anyway, it's just a visual aid. <laughs> so now that I've showed you the components of how easy it is to, uh, you know, gather up over time as you can afford. I mean, I don't sometimes get these overnight. I just, you know, every month purchase another little piece or two of an upcoming system that I know I'm going to build. And then I'll show you what all of these components look like tied in. So here I am out underneath one of my solar arrays. It's already up. And here's the negative MC4 connector coming off the solar panel right here. And those solar cables that I showed you, they just snap in here. And then same with the positive side. They just snap together real nice, super easy. And since I have to go through a wall, I did use one of these uh, waterproof pass through gl glands that I can simply drill a hole through my wall, run my wires, solar panel extension cables up through here into that, which is now completely waterproof on the outside. And right here now on the inside are those extension cables from the solar panels coming into that isolator switch that I showed you out there. And this is just to flip my solar panels off. So, you know, with a flip of a switch, I can turn those panels off if need be for whenever I'm working on the system. From the bottom of that switch, goes right on up into another MPPT 130 that I'm using on this system. Been using it for a couple of years, works fantastically. And I have a lot of videos on Victron if you haven't seen those. And then from the charge controller out, you know, I've got a breaker and I have my place over breakered, but you won't need all the ones that I have. Got a couple of bus bars, pure sine wave inverter, a battery, a battery monitor, which as you can see is 100% full. So then off the battery, I've got a fuse there and a breaker that's a little redundant, but, and then, you know, there it is. It all ties together very, very easily. Inverter cables, got one going to the negative bus bar, one going through a fuse, then to the bus bar, We've got this quick disconnect switch. I like it like that. Then you've got your battery monitor and that from the negative cable right here on the battery comes up 
to the negative on the gauge shunt and then on the which is labeled battery negative on the side and then from the p negative into the bus bar super super easy and this system works well and i have showed you guys many batteries i switch back and forth in here for demonstration purposes this is that go kilowatt hour which I've been running ever since I put the review out on that thing, and the thing's working great. The only thing I found uh, a little issue with was, you know, the internal packing could have been a little bit better. I'm assuming they're taking care of that, but as far as the, the workability of this thing, I've been working it out every day, making coffee with it, pulling over 600 watts out of it for, you know, much of the morning, working just fine and did find a little issue with the gauge but anyway my point is is there's a lot of batteries now this one's right at the 200 dollars mark you go with some uh better brand names they're going to be up closer to 250 but anyway so you get the idea now this is a little bit more like what i'm going to be putting up in the the shop i'm not going to put in that big of an inverter at all I'll probably just use that 1500 watt that i showed you out there on the deck and that's going to be fine but I've got all the other components. So it's gonna be an easy, quick build. And for everything I showed you, that is well under a thousand bucks. And let's say, like I said, you know you don't need a huge, powerful inverter because you're not gonna be drawing, uh, you know, a, a huge wattage device off of it. But what can a, a one this size run, you know? So you'll, you'll start to learn and research like the type of appliances you want to run, find out how much power they consume, and then you can dial in the size of your inverter, you know, really easy. But just for fun, I mean, what does a 12 volt, 375 watt inverter from Victron, what can it run? Well, super easily, it can run your entertainment system. It can also easily run an efficient full-size refrigerator freezer that's 20 cubic feet when it's on and drawing power it's only pulling about 50 60 on a real hot day maybe 70 watts no problem whatsoever for a smaller inverter like that you don't have to have a big inverter if you don't need it can run a five cubic foot deep freezer easy easy in fact you could run this and this together off of that 375. No problem. And if you can't live without coffee coming from an electric coffee maker, now anything that takes a heating element draws a ton more power. So that's something to consider. So this is a smaller version of the coffee makers that are available, much smaller. A little four cup, five cup maker. This thing, when it's on, over 600 watts of power. And if you get up to one of the larger size uh, coffee makers, you're talking 1,000 to 1,500 watts of power. So you would have to be sized appropriately for your needs, just as an example. So this, I couldn't run on that 375, but you know, tied into that 2,000 watt inverter, no problem. I could, I could run a much bigger coffee maker if I chose to. So anyway, that's all you guys need. Uh, for those of you that are wanting to do it, you know, this is a good uh, little blueprint for you. You just need some solar panels. Highly recommend you get a switch to shut those things off with. Get you a good charge controller like a Victron. Highly recommend the Victrons because of their ease of use, ease of installation, and then of course they have the Bluetooth app. You can be sitting uh, remotely monitoring uh, what's happening with your system at, and you know a couple whatever types of breakers and fuses decide what you want to get little bit of wiring little bit of extension cables get you a decent battery a couple of bus bars and an inverter and that's it and you can have that up and running in a day no problem well i'll be jumping back on the shop tomorrow I will show you guys how 
the rest of that build goes. It's going to start taking shape here pretty quick. I like to say it's going to be done in about two days, but if the way I get things done, two weeks is probably more realistic. And I'll show you what that looks like, as well as the solar system that's going to go into it almost immediately. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Aloha. A ah, beautiful day. A little warm. Need some rain. Catchment tank. Had one foot of water in it. Little low.